Fan Showdown, Season 6, Episode 11. And remember, if you have specific measuring criteria you want to see in Season 7 of the Fan Showdown, uh, leave that in the comment section below because we're closely, or quickly, approaching Season 7. First up today, we have Richard and his fan, Double Edged. Richard said this was his first ever fan design, and he's relatively new at 3D design in general. Um, even so, I think what he came up with isn't, isn't half bad. The Double Edge is a six blade design, which is a bit of a departure from the much more standard or more common seven blade or odd number fans that we've seen sent into the show. Most consumer fans are odd number or are odd blade counts. This on the other hand, we're going even. The Double Edge gets its name due to its double edge. Each leading edge has like a slight chamfer type feature on it, which kind of gives it another edge on the underside of each blade. So since you got a primary edge on the front and then you kind of got this secondary edge right there behind it on the lower side of the blade. Richard really didn't give much reason to why this specific feature shows up in his design, but if we were to like guess, maybe maybe it'll do something for acoustics, maybe sound a little better, I don't really know. If you have an idea of how this kind of double edge type feature would help an axial fan out. Make sure to leave it in the comments down below. We'll go ahead and see what you say. The fan does have a rotating tip ring, which might also further improve the acoustics. I don't think it's gonna be silent, but it might be like less fatiguing on anyone within hearing distance or nearby. All in all, not really a bad first attempt. Next up, we have Brett and his fan Cycloid. And this one's blue for reasons. The Cycloid design kind of reminds me of a, a slimmed down A12X25. Brett said the inspiration for his design was the Brachistochrone curve. What's a Brachistochrone curve, you might ask? Good question. I had the same one. But what Brachistochrone means is short as time, and this is a curve that allows an object under the influence of gravity, assuming no friction, to get from a higher point to a lower point in the shortest amount of time. And if that doesn't help, here's a figure I found on Wikipedia that kind of shows it in action. You got three lines, two are blue, one is red, and there's a ball moving down each one of them to an identical endpoint that's lower than the first. And as you see, all three balls are moving, and then the red line, the Brachistochrone curve, that ball gets there first. This curve is the inspiration for this specific blade design. Brett said if the Brachistochrone curve can help an object go from a higher point to a lower point in the shortest amount of time, why not the same for air particles? Why not? He also did say that <laughs> this fan is more of like a like a half cycloid, half Brachistochrone, but you kind of get the you get the idea. In addition to this specific curve that Brett used to design his fan blades, he also added what he calls nubbins on the end of each blade, and he's hoping that these kind of introduce some turbulence and hopefully boost that performance even more. Now, I don't know if it'll work, but I do appreciate the outside of the box thinking. The third fan of the day is Dean and his fan 11 wing. 11 wing is exactly what it says on the 10. It is an 11 bladed fan with each blade profile inspired by kind of like a swept back wing, you could say. Dean said he skimmed through some past fan showdown episodes for inspiration and that's kind of how he landed on the design that we see here today. As for the swept back blades, instead of the more common swept forward blades we see on most commercial fans and most fans sent into the show, uh, the reason he did that is because he kind of just likes how swept back blades work and he wanted to see a fan with swept back blades do good. So hopefully this does good. I don't know how good it'll do, but I do like the high blade count and with a little bit of swept back, it kind of gives me that jet engine vibe. Hypersonic missiles and now new engines, hot. Diggity. Now I saved this final fan for last because it's easily one of my favorite designs ever sent into the fan showdown and I'm thinking a lot of you guys are going to agree. This is the Jetstream and it was created by Tom and what you might not notice right off first glance is that this fan is comprised of two axial fans in one. Yes sirree Bob, we got a contra rotating fan. Probably one of the best designs that I have ever seen 3D printed. Now before we get into how this thing functions, let's just remember that the A12X25 has little to no torque, so the fact that Tom got this to work at all is, is a victory in and of itself. The best part, in my opinion, is that there's no belt drives, there's no gears. Tom didn't need any of that to make this thing work. The fan itself is made of many pieces, some of which are 3D printed, others are parts I had to buy and even modify. The power plant is obviously an A12X25 kind of the norm around here, to which a 3D printed disc is attached with kind of a larger hub than you would normally see. And inside that hub, it is basically hollow. After installing the fan disc, the fan is kind of built on the backside. It's not kind of, the fan is built on the backside of the A12X25. The next thing to go in is a spacer plate with a drive assembly attached. Now the drive assembly is bolted to the spacer plate and is comprised of essentially two rollers. And these two rollers are made of a shaft. So I had to buy this one long shaft, cut it into three pieces. Two of those shafts are used in two of these rollers, which go through a spool that's 3D printed with two bearings on each end. And then additionally, you add these two little O-rings 
into specific points on the spool itself and then when you attach that to the spacer plate and then lower that into the fan, those little O-rings are gonna contact that drive fan within that cutout cavity that we see. That in turn transmits the power from the drive fan to the driven fan. And because we use these little spools to drive the driven fan from the drive fan, the upper fan or the driven fan, it spins in the opposite direction at the same speed. It's just, it's just, it's just really good. I like it. The upper fan has the same two bearings that the spools use and the same, well, the last piece of the shaft that I cut up and around it is a shroud. And then on top of that shroud is this little cone piece that's clipped into it with a hole that kind of keeps everything squared and centered. There's no glue, there's no messing around, just some clever engineering to create probably one of the best, if not the best, contra-rotating fan designs I've ever seen on the channel, or even really on the internet, really. Once the fan is fully assembled, you can see that as I rotate the drive fan from behind the upper driven fan, spins in the opposite direction at the same speed. It is just beautiful. Now, before we see how well this thing functions, specifically in the smoke test is what I wanna see, uh, let's see, let's see how it sounds. In the sound test, the jet stream came in around 64.6 dBA. The 11 wing came in around 53. The cycloid came in around 46.4. And the double edge came in around 51.3. Now the jet stream does make some noise and it doesn't spin all that fast given it's driving two fans and not one. But I think that there's, I mean, you know, honestly, if I, Maybe if I put it together a little bit better, my printer is more dialed in, it'd be even even better. But either way, it, it is pretty awesome. And what I want to see is if that stream of smoke coming out the back looks like a laser. In the static pressure test, the double edge came in at 3.0 millimeters of H2O. The cycloid came in at two. The 11 wing came in at 2.5 and the jet stream came in at 0.9. Placing the double edge in first place, the 11 wing in second, the cycloid in third and the jet stream in fourth. And overall they finished 14th, 25th, 37th and 44th respectively. Now it is a bummer to see the jet stream perform so poorly, but even with those numbers, this is still my favorite fan ever sent into the fan showdown in the history of this series and it's going to be one to it's going to be one that's going to be hard to beat especially in creativity and just engineering skill to going into building this but i like to see if somebody out there can do it and if you have the top-notch engineering or design skills to pull it off make sure to get subscribed and then send your fan design into the fan showdown at gmail.com in the description below is some more information on how to send your fan designs in, some other useful models, and specifically a drawing that shows you the critical dimensions to make sure your fan fits on the A12X25 frame. And then you need to send me at least a .stl or a .stp to the fan showdown at gmail.com, and we'll see if you can create something as cool as this. Also, if you have a bill of material of things I need to purchase to uh, fabricate your fan, make sure to send that with you with the design. That's always uh, very helpful. Till next time.